President, please be seated. Le président. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is back in session. Reprise des débats. Now the chamber will hear the sufferings from the civil party. Mr. Sospon Yamin, now you are allowed to express the sufferings in relation to the crimes alleged against the two accused, Nguyen Chi and Kiu Sam Pong, and you can also express harm suffered by you during the Democratic Campuchia resulting in your civil party application to claim collective and the moral reparation for physical, material or mental injuries as direct consequences of those crimes. You may proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours, everyone in and around the courtroom. As a civil party, I, after I have told the court of my experience, I am very happy and delighted that the, the chamber, the, both national and international judges, understand about the sufferings inflicted upon the Cham people. Now I would like to express my sufferings which uh, was done to me and Cham people, and uh, also my family members, all of us uh, were harmed and hurt uh, by Khmer Rouge. Generally speaking, Khmer people have been mistreated by the Khmer Rouge. Not only my family members were mistreated, but also other families uh, were executed uh, and tortured. They endured the sufferings. They were killed with the back of the hole, and uh, some other uh, were uh, dragged and dragged into the water, and they died. I cannot express all everything from my heart. However, Je pas assez de mots pour ce que dans mon coeur. I have uh, told the court and I have expressed what I came across during the period. Dans cette salle now de I appeal, now I am appealing to this uh, court the national court and the international court and also the uh, UN, United Nations, to national, stop uh, the regime from controlling uh, the country once again. All religions, including Toutes Buddhism and Islam, le ou Islam, were abolished. Buddhism is uh, the religion of the nation, and other religions were abolished in the regime. Buddhism was abolished during the time Hmong were deprived Pagodas uh, were destroyed, although Buddhism is the national religion in the country. 
I don't think même, I have more to say because malgré le fait que le bouddhisme I soit have never been in this court before je it is my first time dire, and I have told the court uh, so far about uh, what happened to me my apology Mr President that is uh, this is what I want to say at the end ce que j'ai vécu euh, et je vous présente mes excuses monsieur le président c'est tout ce que j'ai bah, oh, 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 President, thank you, Mr. Ponyamin. Merci, Monsieur Ponyamin. And uh, I was informed by the senior legal officers that uh, you are uh, you wish to Monsieur put Christophe questions uh, to nous the accused through me, the president. Is that correct? Par euh, la présidence, c'est-à-dire moi-même. Est-ce exact? Civil party. Yes, in fact, I oui. really want to put uh, some questions to the accused, oui, but I am, afraid, I am afraid to my question would often to the accused. Uh, Mr. Pre President, now you are entitled to put questions to the accused, and you are given opportunity vous pouvez poser vos At questions to put questions to Vous en avez le droit. Accused, but uh, your questions have to go through me as the president of the chamber. You cannot direct uh, the questions to vous ne pouvez vous adresser directement the accused uh, by yourself. National Litco lawyers, le Mr. President, pour les parties civiles uh, the questions. Monsieur le président. Uh, Uh, written down in uh, the the paper before the civil party, uh, so I would like to seek the floor. Jeux, I would like to ask permission from uh, Mr. President to allow the, with the civil party to read the questions in that paper. Qui sont sur le document. Civil party. La partie civile. I have a few questions. J'ai quelques questions à poser. To put through the queues uh, through Mr. Oh, President. Ah, question number one. Première question. You two were leaders of the regime. You made. Vous étiez tous deux des People undergo suffering. Uh, people were executed and killed. Gens, so, what were the purpose of tués. your regime? Quel était l'objectif, la raison d'être de votre régime? Question number two. Deuxième question. Why all religions were abolished? Pourquoi fallait-il Including uh, my religion, uh, my religion, Islamic religion. Islam. We uh, Jam people were persecuted nous, on a permanent basis uh, during that time. On nous a persécuté en permanence à cette époque. President, thank you. Merci. The chamber wishes to inform Mr. Sohpun Yamin that after ascertaining the position of both accused on 8 January 2015 regarding the exercise of their right to remain silent, the chamber notes that the two accused maintain their expressed position unless and until such time the chamber is expressly informed otherwise by the co-accused or their counsel. It is therefore incumbent upon them to inform the chamber in a timely and efficient manner should the accused resolve to waive the right to remain silent and be willing to respond to questions by the bench or relevant parties at any stage of the proceedings. As of today, the Chamber is not informed that the, the co-accused have changed their expressed position and thus agreed to provide their responses to questions. Par laquelle il consentirait à répondre aux questions. So, there is no regulations or rules donc, allowing the 
chamber to force the two accused to provide the answers to your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Sos Pun Yamin. The hearing of your sufferings, which you stated that you were mistreated during the Democratic Cambodia come to an end. Your testimony will contribute to the truth. You may not be accused, and you may return to any desired destination or to your residence. I wish you good luck and good health as well as uh, prosperity in your family. Court officer, in collaboration with Wessels, please send uh, Mr. Sospun Yamin to any desired destination and also invite uh, two TCW832 into the courtroom. President, good afternoon, Mr. Winnes. What is your name? Answer, my name is Seng Kui. President, thank you, Mr. Seng Kui. When were you born? Do you recall it? President, uh, please observe the microphone before you respond, otherwise your voice does not go through the microphone for interpreters to interpret into other languages. Answer, I was born on 5th February 1954. Thank you. Question. What is your place of birth and uh, oui, where is oui. your current address? Quelle est votre adresse actuelle? Answer. Réponse. I was born in Pum in Angkor Ban 2 village. Je suis né dans le village d'Angkor Ban 2. Angkor Ban commune, commune Kong district, Kampong Cham province. Province de Kampong Cham. And now I am Living in Angkoban, two village, Angkoban commune, Kongmia district, Kampong Cham province. What are your parents' names? Question. Comment s'appelle vos parents? Answer. My father's name is Pao Seng, alive. My mother's is Yen Alangi, deceased. Question. What about your wife? What is her name and how many children do you have? Answer. My wife's name, my later wife's name is Dieng Sok Hien. My former wife passed away over 13 years ago. And uh, I had uh, seven uh, children with my previous wife. And with my current wife, I have no additional children. Mon épouse is actually moi, pas
according to the report of the grave chair, you have uh, no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is Moon Chien Kiu Sung Pong, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. Is that true? Answer, yes, that is true. I have uh, no relationship uh, by blood or by law to any of the two accused. President, and uh, I was uh, informed as well to that you have la already taken a note an note before the Iron Club statute. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Answer, Réponse. yes, I have already taken a note. Oui, j'ai prêté ça. President, now I would like Réponse. to inform you Permettez of your moi. rights before the chamber. Vous, Mr. Singh Kui, as a witness in the proceedings before the chamber, vous you may refuse to respond to, to any question or to make any comments which may incriminate you de vous right against self-incrimination. Your obligations. As a witness in the proceedings before the chamber, you must uh, respond to any questions by the bench or relevant parties, except where your response or comments to those questions may incriminate you, as the chamber has just informed you of your rights as a witness. As a witness, you must tell the truth that you have known, heard, seen, remembered, or experienced, or observed directly about an event or occurrence relevant to the questions that the bench or parties pose to you. Mr. Saint-Coué, have you ever provided interviews to the investigator of the OCIJ, if so, how many times did they take place and where did they take place? Si vous avez été entendu par les enquêteurs du bureau de cours d'instruction, combien de fois, quand et où? Réponse. I have been interviewed uh, twice by the investigator of the OCIJ once. It was in August 2008 in Ongobana Communal Hall. And the second one was on, uh, was in July 2011 at Ongobana Commune. President, thank you. Before you appear in the courtroom, have you read the written records of the interviews uh, you gave to investigators to refresh your memory? Answer. I could recall some information in those written records of interviews. President, to your best knowledge, Votre connaissance. Can you confirm Les réponses whether the written records of the interview are consistent with what you gave to the investigators of the OCIJ two times at Uncle Ban Commune Hall? Enfin, vos enquêteurs du bureau de cours d'instruction, deux fois dans le hall de la commune d'Uncle Ban. Yes. Réponse. Oui. They are consistent with uh, my effet, responses. Euh, la correspond. President, thank you. In accordance Le with 90, Rule 91 bis Merci. of the internal rules, du the trial chamber now chambre, gives the floor to the co-prosecutors to put questions to this witness before other party. The combined time for the co-prosecutors and the co-lawyers is two sessions. For the first session, the co-prosecutor and civil party will have a time from now until 10 to 3. You may now proceed.
15h moins 10. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon, judges. Good afternoon, counsel. And good afternoon to everyone in and around the courtroom. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Thank you for being with us here today. I'm going to be asking you uh, some questions. My name is Andrew Boyle. I'm an attorney with the Office of the Co-Prosecutors. And then I'll be turning the floor over to my national counterpart, Mr. Seng Liang, to ask you some more questions. You mentioned uh, in, in answer to a question of the President earlier that uh, you were born in Angkor Ban number 2 village in Kang Mea district, Angkor Ban commune. Can you tell us, is that where you were living when the Khmer Rouge took control of Angkor Ban commune? Answer. My the rather the current uh, uh, address is uh, where I was living in that period. So I have been living in the same hometown since that time. Thank you. And can you tell us when did the Khmer Rouge? take control of Angkor Ban commune? Les Khmer Rouge ont pris le contrôle de la commune d'Angkor Ban. Réponse. To my knowledge, they took control from 1976 up to 1979. Jusqu'à 79. I heard, at least in the interpretation, that you said the Khmer Rouge had control of Angkor Ban commune beginning in 1976. Is that correct? Or did they have control of Angkor Ban commune before 1976 as one, at some period as well? Answer. From 1975, new people had been evacuated uh, from Phnom Penh to my area. So uh, the Khmer Rouge took control of my area from 1975, 76 up to 1979. Thank you. And before the Khmer Rouge took control of your area, what was your job or what was your position? Quel était votre poste, votre profession? Answer. Before Khmer Rouge era, I was a simply an ordinary citizen doing rice farming in my own village. And when the Khmer Rouge took control of your village, did you continue to be a rice farmer or did your work change? Answer. After Khmer Rouge came to control my village, I was a slave among other slaves, and I was assigned to uh, ploughing the fields and doing rice farming until the end of the regime. Can you tell the court what your ethnicity is? Are you Cham or Khmer or some other ethnicity? Vous appartenez à un groupe ethnique ou plutôt à quel groupe ethnique vous appartenez? Cham ou Khmer ou un autre groupe? Réponse. I am Khmer. Je suis Khmer. And my nationality is Khmer. Je suis Khmer et je suis de nationalité cambodgienne. 
1975, when the Khmer Rouge first took power in your village, were there any Cham in Angkor Ban village number two? Uh, and sir, within Angkor Ban village, uh, there were Cham people living in two villages. Angkor Ban uh, village one, one village, Angkor Ban three village. And as for my uh, village, Angkor Ban number two village, uh, there were no Cham people living in that village. And can you tell the court how far and in what direction was Angkor Ban Village 1 from your village, Angkor Ban Village 2? Angkor Ban 1, du numéro 2. Réponse. Answer. Angkor Ban one village was adjacent uh, to Uncle Ban, uh, Uncle Ban two village, and they were adjacent villages, and uh, they shared uh, the they shared borders. And how about Angkor Ban village three? Does it also share a border with Angkor Ban village two? Est-ce aussi juste à côté de Angkor Ban deux? But answer yes, that is right. They shared border uh, with uh, Uncle Ban too. And does a common road run between Angkor Ban villages one, two, and three? Uh, answer yes, uh, we had a common road to be used and uh, there were others uh, secondary roads uh, to different areas within the, those villages before the Khmer Rouge took control of Angkor Ban commune did you interact with the Cham that lived in Angkor Ban Village 1 and Angkor Ban Village 3, either through uh, personal connections or business connections or any type of other interaction with the Cham in those communities? Answer. Prior to Khmer Rouge period, Cham people and I were living in adjacent villages. We did not have a close relationship, however, we traveled past each other villages. In that period, Cham people were peaceful, and uh, for me, I was a rice farmer, so I did not have a close relationship with the Cham people during the time. Thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask you now about um, some more general questions about uh, um, the Cham in the adjacent villages uh, to your village. Um, in the period before the Khmer Rouge took power in Angkor Ban commune, uh, can you tell us, are you aware of what religion the Cham practiced uh, at that period? Answer. Réponse. To my knowledge, à ma when the Khmer Rouge came to control the country of my area, de là où some people uh, uh, did not uh, practice their religion because uh, they were afraid 
of uh, the Khmer Rouge. And they had fear of the Khmer Rouge. And uh, after Khmer Rouge had uh, taken control of uh, the area, Cham people were merged with the uh, Khmer people. Traditional clothes, uh, religions uh, were abolished at the time, and they were turned into Khmer people. Leur, uh, Thank you, and, and we'll be getting to, to some of those changes in, in a little bit. Um, but first, I'd like to focus uh, on, on the Cham before the Khmer Rouge arrived. Did you know what religion the Cham practiced? Answer. Before Khmer Rouge came to control the country, uh, Cham people uh, practice Islam and they uh, believe in Muhammad religion. Was there a mosque located somewhere in Angkor Ban commune where the Cham could pray? Yes, there was a large mosque for them to congregate. And did the Cham wear clothes that were different from the clothes that the Khmer would wear? Yes, uh, they... Uh, wore clothes according to their tradition which were uh, which was distinct from our Khmer clothes. And can you tell us what were some of the distinct clothes that the men and the women who were Cham would wear? But បងប្អូនចាំគៀវរ៉ុសនេះគឺគាត់ស្លៀកមានស្លៀកសារុងអង់ and it was uh, long that it touches uh, the, the ground. Was the Cham women's hair any different from Khmer women's haircuts? As for the hair feature, uh, they, uh, they actually uh, maintain a, a long hair. However, the hair usually hidden in their head scarf. Did the Cham speak a language that was distinct from the Khmer language? But Yes, uh, Cham people uh, speak uh, their own language, which was distinct from the Khmer language. And did the Cham eat any foods that were different from the Khmer, or not eat any foods that Khmer people would eat? Uh, Cham people eat uh, rather differently from uh, the Khmer people, in particularly they do not eat pork at all. As for uh, fish and uh, pork, uh, they do uh, consume it, but uh, the pork is totally banned by its religion. Now moving to the period after the Khmer Rouge took control 
of Angkor Ban commune. At that time, after the Khmer Rouge had arrived, did you have an opportunity to see how the Cham in Angkor Ban villages one and three were treated? The Cham people living in the true villages had mostly been evacuated through other areas where I did not know, and there were not many Cham families still living in the villages. During the Khmer Rouge period, were Cham ever transferred into your village, that is, into Angkor Ban, village number two? <laughs> from uh, starting from late 1976. Cham people had been transferred to live uh, in my village. And according uh, to my understanding, there were about 15 Cham families, but they were not a Cham uh, from uh, village 1 and uh, village 3. They were evac evacuated from elsewhere. And can you estimate in these approximately 15 Cham families, how many people are we talking about when you say 15 Cham families? Combien de personnes cela représente au total? Pourriez-vous donner une estimation? My approach, I, I made a uh, mistake. In fact, I refer to uh, the number of uh, persons, about 15 to 16 uh, persons, Cham people, and they were from about five to six families, and the total number of them were about 15 or 16. And I heard you say that they were not transferred from the adjacent villages, but do you know where they were transferred from? I do not know where they were evacuated from. Suddenly, I saw them uh, evacuated to my village and to work in the rice fields uh, with my villagers. The Cham that were transferred into your village, were they men and women, or just men or just women? Y avait-il seulement des hommes ou bien seulement des femmes? Initially, they came as families. I mean, so the parents and the, the children début, together. Ils sont venus en tant que famille, c'est-à-dire parents et enfants ensemble. I heard you say initially they came as families. Question, je vous ai entendu. Why did you say initially? Did they? not remain as families after that? Later on, the husbands uh, were transferred to work elsewhere, and I only saw the wives and the children remained. That's why I said initially they were as a, a family. And that happened uh, a few months after they arrived in uh, the village. You just mentioned um, children. How, how old were the children that were transferred into your village with these families?
the age varied. Some were 55 to 6 years old, while others were around 10 years old. After the men were transferred out of the village, how many Cham persons remained in your village, essentially? How many women and children Cham remained in your village? There were between 10 to 15. I just want to clarify for the record, um, I believe I heard you say before that there were about 15 uh, to 16 Cham total transferred into your village, and the men were later transferred out, and that left 10 to 15 uh, women and children Cham in your village. So I just want to make sure that what you're saying is somewhere perhaps between five Cham men were transferred out of the village. Is that correct? There were uh, uh, a bit less because in some families only the wife and the children arrived and not the husband. So uh, maybe there were only three or four uh, male chams who were sent away elsewhere. And when the Cham arrived in your village, how did you know that they were Cham? Because I know the distinction uh, between the Khmer and the Cham people, it was apparent from the way they dress and from the way they behave. I myself was born near the Cham village. And uh, when they initially arrived in my village, uh, they uh, secretly spoke Cham to one another. So you were able to identify them as Cham in part because you heard them speaking Cham secretly to one another, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. You also mentioned uh, that they had distinctive dress. Am I to understand that when they arrived in your village in 1976, they were wearing distinctive Cham dress at that time? When they arrived uh, to live in my village, they no longer wore their distinctive uh, dress. They had to wear the dress that the uh, Khmer people wore and they did not uh, speak the Cham language anymore. They started uh, speaking the Khmer language. Thank you. Can you tell us, at the time that the Cham were transferred into your village, how many people total lived in Angkor Ban village 2, approximately? To my knowledge, uh, the total number of them was uh, between 15 to 16. I apologize, my question probably wasn't very clear. I'm talking about uh, the total number of people in Angkor Ban village number two, both Khmer and Cham. How many people were there in the village at that time? 
that the Cham were transferred into it in 1976. I can only provide you an estimate as I did not have anything involved with the census and I observed that uh, while we had our communal eating and also based on the, uh, the number of houses I could say that uh, the total uh, number of people, that is both uh, the combined the number, number of the Khmer and the Cham people were between 600 to 700. 700 and during the period th that the Cham were in your village, did you have a chance to observe them and did you have a chance to talk with them at any point? No, I did not have any chance to uh, chit-chat with them. During the Khmer Rouge, uh, early in the morning, I was assigned to plow the rice field, and the only time I met them was at the uh, communal uh, dining, and we were not allowed to uh, chit-chat. And by the time we had our uh, dinner, it was around 6 or 7 p.m., and we did not have any chance to talk to one another. As far as you were able to ascertain, were the Cham allowed to practice their religion while they were living in Angkor Ban, village number two? Uh, no. It was not allowed. There was no sacred place for uh, the Cham people to to worship or to pray. And uh, they were uh, placed uh, under the same condition as that imposed on the Khmer people in terms of the way of living and working. And you already mentioned that they were not allowed to wear their traditional clothes. Were the Cham women allowed to continue to have long hair at that time? Uh, to me, I did not see any band on uh, uh, the hair. Je ne les ai pas porter However, I observed uh, some Cham people uh, had short haircut, while Mais others still had a long one. You already mentioned uh, that the Cham were required to speak their language secretly. If they weren't speaking their own language, were they speaking in Khmer? It was imperative uh, for them to speak uh, the Khmer language. They actually secretly spoke uh, the Cham language to one parlaient. another at the uh, beginning of their arrival, and after that, uh, the Cham language was completely banned, and they had to speak the Khmer language. Did they speak the Khmer language well? No, they spoke the Khmer language with an accent. And you mentioned that they were, uh, that the speaking of the Cham language was completely banned at some point. 
after their arrival in Angkor Ban Village 2. Do you know how that instruction was conveyed that the speaking of the Cham language was completely banned at that point? I did not uh, see anyone impose uh, such restriction. However, the uh, Cham people themselves uh, decided uh, not to speak the Cham language anymore, and they have to uh, make themselves speak the Khmer language as they were afraid of uh, being punished for speaking the Cham language. Or if there was a restriction on the, uh, the Cham language, I was not aware of that. The prohibitions that you've mentioned on practicing Islam, on wearing traditional dress, do you know how the Khmer Rouge enforced these prohibitions? Or why the Cham complied with these prohibitions? I am not sure uh, regarding this matter. What I know is that for the Cham people who were evacuated to live in my village, they no longer wore the distinct Cham dress, but instead they wore the Khmer uh, dress or clothes. Thank you. Did you ever see any arrests of Cham in your village? Yes, I did. I witnessed uh, it uh, with my own eyes. In around 1977, uh, at around 8 o'clock uh, at night, the Cham and the Khmer people just returned from the rice field and we uh, actually ate uh, dinner together at the communal dining hall. That very night, the uh, security force came to arrest the Cham people. They did not arrest only one person, but they arrested all the Cham people living in village number two, and the arrest took place at the dining hall where they were having dinner together with the Khmer people. And I was there having my dinner uh, in that uh, communal dining hall. And uh, I'm going to ask you some questions about the details of that arrest. But first I want to ask, was that the only arrest that you saw uh, of uh, the Cham in your village? Or were there other occasions where you also saw arrests of Cham? That was the only occasion that I saw the Cham people being arrested. And can you tell us, you, uh, you just stated that the arrest that took place at that point in 1977 uh, was all of the Cham people in your village at that time. Am I to understand that that means that from your previous testimony there was an arrest of about 15 women and children at that time? It is my understanding that the Cham people 
were not aware of uh, the uh, plan to, to arrest them. They were having dinner, and suddenly the uh, security force came to uh, arrest them. The charm that were arrested after or while they were having dinner was it comprised of women and children, the women and children that you mentioned earlier? Yes. Uh, it was mixed. Uh, there were women and there were uh, male and female children. And is it correct that there would have been somewhere between 10 and 15 women and children arrested at this time? Yes, uh, that was about right. And all of the Cham in your village were arrested at that time, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Can you tell us who were the security forces that you mentioned were carrying out these arrests? The security forces that uh, arrested the Cham people belonged to the uh, commune. Do you remember the names of any of the security forces that were carrying out the arrests? I recall a, a person by the name of Rudin. And can you tell us who was Run? Run held a position within the uh, commune security forces. Run avait une position dans les forces de sécurité. That's what he was known at the time. C'est pourquoi il était connu à l'époque. And do you know what position he held? I heard from other people that uh, he was in charge of the uh, communal security forces and he had uh, three or four men uh, subordinated uh, to him and they came with him uh, that time at that time. And did you hear anything else about Run as a person or as the chief of the commune security? de personnes ou en tant que chef des forces de sécurité de la commune. I also heard that uh, Ron was in charge of the overall security force in the Ankoban commune and he was in charge of uh, conducting the arrest uh, throughout the entire commune. Were you afraid of Run at that time? At that time, not only me who was afraid of him, but also other people. When we saw him coming, everybody was shaking. He was uh, so powerful and everybody Il was afraid of him. Tout le monde avait peur de lui. Can you describe, in addition to him being very powerful, why you were afraid of him? Uh, 
to my knowledge, every time he uh, made his presence known, it means that he came to arrest people and took them away and killed them without uh, questions being asked. That was the reason people were so afraid of him. Do you know where Run came from? Uh, Run came from Angkor village Angkor Ban number no. 7, uh, one of the uh, villages in the Angkor Ban commune. And uh, prior to him becoming the uh, commune security, he was a former uh, Khmer soldier. Did you ever hear any nicknames or aliases for Run that people would use? Answer. It was only Run that was used at that time. Mr. Witness, I'd like to read to you uh, a section uh, of your written record of interview um, to, to point you um, to a description you provided earlier uh, and to try to get some more information from you about that description. Um, this is at E3 slash 5301 English ERN 0021 0483. Kamai 0063519 and French 0062240 and this is what you said quote, I have heard Run referred to as a butcher he was called this because he arrested people in the village and commune Run was in charge of security for all of the villages in this commune so people were afraid of him and would shake when they would see him at that time we dared not talk about him after the fall of the regime, people said he used to arrest people in the areas east and west of the river. This was at the site of a bridge in Angkor Ban commune. Close quote. Is it correct, as you stated, that you heard Run referred to as a butcher? And if it is correct, can you tell us what you understood that to mean? Answer. I heard people call Orun a butcher or a, an executioner because uh, he was the one who killed people. Do you have any knowledge of what happened to Run after the Khmer Rouge lost power in your commune? Uh, <coughs> and answer. Réponse. After Pol Pot the regime was defeated in 1979, the individual by the name Run was chopped to death by uh, people at Ankoban Stream. People were angry with uh, Ron Les because during Pol Pot time, he was the one who Pot had arrested uh, family members or relatives of villagers. Uh, for this reason, after the end of the regime, he was uh, arrested and chopped to death by people. Going back to the arrest of the Cham on that evening in 1977 in your village, were you ever told why the Cham were being arrested on that evening by Run and the other security forces? 
les autres euh, membres de, des forces de sécurité. They are... Answer. I was not uh, told of the reason. I did not know at that time, uh, and I noticed that uh, they came to arrest the uh, Cham people on that night. When the Cham were arrested, were they tied or bound in any way? Question. Lorsqu'ils ont été arrêtés. Ont-ils été ligotés ou non Est-ce que l'on a mis des entraves Answer. Their hands were tied oui, to a, their back. A attaché les mains dans le dos. Yes, uh, the, their hands were tied to a string and as for children, young children, uh, their hands uh, were not uh, tied of four or three years old children. Les enfants âgés de moins de trois ans n'avaient pas les mains ligotées. And after the charm, except for the young children, were tied up, what happened to the charm? What did they do with the, with the charm next? Uh, answer. Chief, village chiefs, village chief and deputy chief of uh, Ban les chefs de village et les chefs adjoints to de village ordered uh, us to ride those young people on ox carts to a pagoda to a pagoda at 9 p.m. Jusque dans une pagode, c'était à 21 heures. And were you ordered to participate in this event Vous in any way? Answer. No, I uh, was non. not engaged in arresting people. Non, je n'ai pas participé à l'arrestation de qui que ce soit. I apologize, Mr. Witness. I didn't mean to imply that you were engaged Monsieur, in arresting people. Uh, my question was uh, in relation to the ox carts. Were you ordered by the village chief to participate in transporting the cham by ox cart? Answer. The deputy chief of the village, who was also chief of a unit, ordered me uh, to transport uh, jam people by an ox cart together with other. Uh, Jam people who were on other ox carts. I was the one who received an order to ride uh, those jam people on an ox cart. And did you have a choice? Did you feel that you had a choice to refuse this order to drive the cham on the ox cart? Answer. I did not dare to refuse the assignment. If I had refused, I would have been taken away and killed together with some people. They issued an order to me, and I had to follow it. I understand. Can you tell us how many ox carts were used to transport the Cham people? Answer. To my knowledge, uh, there were five or six ox carts were used at the time. It was. Uh, it happened during the night time. It was so dark, and I did not uh, care to count how many ox carts were used at that time. I uh, was uh, following uh, the other ox carts. Uh, which were in front of me during that night. And where did you transport the charm to at that time? Answer. 
Ba đặc chính pi hùng bài They were transported from the kitchen hall in the my village and they were transferred to Otakuan Pagoda. La Pagoda de Otakuan. And how did you know to transfer them to Otrakun Pagoda? Who told you where to transfer them to? Answer, I was told by the deputy Chief, the uh, chief, chief of the village and also village deputy chief of the unit that I had to transport uh, those young people to Otokun Pagoda. This is, uh, the, this is the information that I learned from. Can you tell us the name Question. of the deputy chief of the village or the deputy chief of the unit? Answer. His name was On, who On. told me. Lui qui me dit. On received an order from On. Run. That was an order from Run. Run qui a donné and this order went through a deputy Et unit of chief. On was actually a kind person, On and the villagers love this, douce. love and like this individual. However, because of uh, an order from Run, he has to follow that order. Can you tell us how far was it from Angkor Ban village to, to Wat Otrakun? Answer. During the transportation, we did not drop them off. Inside the pagoda, we drop uh, those jam people at uh, the pagoda gates. And the distance from the village to that gate was about three kilometers away. Or over three kilometers away. This is my estimate. So to travel those three kilometers, uh, how long did that take and what time did you arrive approximately at the gate of Wat Otrakun? Answer, we arrived at the gate of the pagoda at around, at around nine. PM because uh, we could uh, drive the ox carts uh, very slowly on Les that road. Ne avancer que très lentement sur cette route. And did the security personnel who participated in the arrests Le or any other security personnel travel with you to the pagoda? À cette arrestation ou d'autres membres de des forces de sécurité ont, vous ont-ils accompagné uh, dans le transport de ces personnes? Answer. Réponse. No, no, not on the, my ox card. I do not know about other ox cards. And si from my recollection, Mais no, he, he, not, uh, he was not with us. No. Did, did the charm that you were transporting on your ox cart, did you hear them say anything or make any other noises during your trip? from the village to the pagoda. Answer. During the trip, I had to transport the three jam people, one mother, two children. They 
sat uh, quietly and uh, I had to drive uh, the ox cart uh, as fast as I could in order to reach uh, the destination. Was there anyone at the gate of the pagoda waiting when you arrived there? Attendait-il à la pagode ou ouais, plutôt au portail de la pagode bah, à votre arrivée Answer. Réponse. The distance from the gate of the pagoda to the compound of uh, the pagoda was about 700 meters. Il y avait environ 700 mètres. There was uh, one person uh, who had been there already. Réponse. Uh, he was uh, waiting to receive uh, jam people. He was perhaps the security guard uh, at the district level who was there to receive jam people. And did that person say anything when you arrived at the gate in your ox cart? Answer. That person only said that uh, we all could return back home after we dropped uh, the jam people. And so did the Cham people get off of your ox cart and off of the other ox carts when you reached the gate to the pagoda? Yes. And did you see where the Cham were going when you dropped them off? At the gate of the pagoda. Avez-vous vu où sont allés les chams une fois que vous les avez déposés à la portail, au portail de la pagode? Answer. Réponse. Immediately after they got off Tout de suite après. the ox carts, they were let into the compound of uh, Otokun Pagoda, and we, the drivers of the ox carts, uh, returned back home. Following your depositing of the Cham at the gate of the pagoda and watching them enter the pagoda, did you ever see any of the Cham that were arrested that night again? Avez-vous revu plutôt certains des Cham qui avaient été arrêtés ce soir-là? Answer. Réponse. Since that time, I have uh, never seen them back. I mean, uh, those jam people who had been living in the same village as me, I have never, never seen even a single one. Did you ever learn anything about what happened to people who were arrested and sent to Wat Ochakon Pagoda. Ce qui arrivait aux gens qui étaient envoyés à Otrokun. President, please, please hold on, uh, Mr. Winner. You may not proceed, uh, Mr. Copa. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, one observation and one objection. The observation is um, that I'm not quite sure if I understand the microscopical level of questioning. Um, we are talking about one hour of uh, somebody who brought charm to a security center. However, having said that, uh, I think um, uh, Prosecution is now asking for speculation. Um, he clearly says that he dropped off the charm, never saw them again. So whatever he's saying now about what happened is asking for speculation. 
Mr. President, just uh, to respond briefly, um, it's true that he said that he doesn't know what happened to the CHAM. Uh, uh, a, a close observer of my question would realize that I was asking in the second question about if he learned anything about anyone who was arrested and sent to that security center, and so it's an entirely different question. Le President. President, the objection by the Defense Council is overruled. The, the Chamber needs to hear the, the response to the question put by the question. International Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Mr. Winner, you are instructed to give the response to the last question put by Co-Prosecutor. I'll, I'll repeat the question. Uh, did you ever learn anything about what happened to people who were arrested and sent to Wat O Tracon Pagoda during the Khmer Rouge period? Answer regarding the arrests of Cham people, what I all I know is that uh, in 1977, the arrests and purchases uh, were conducted in a widespread manner throughout the country. That is all I know. President, it is now time for a short break. The chamber will take a break from now until 3 o'clock. Court officer, please uh, find a proper Monsieur waiting Monsieur room Monsieur for this witness during Monsieur the Monsieur break Monsieur time, Monsieur and please Monsieur invite Monsieur him back into the witness Monsieur stand Monsieur in the courtroom at 3 p.m. The court is now in recess. Monsieur.